Is the series over, John? Um, I have a different feeling than last year. Uh, I know <laughs> Golden State trounced Cleveland in the first two games, but there's one difference this year, and that's number 35. Mm-hmm. So, yes, I say it's over. Over is in sweep. Now, now there's going to be a penalty, John, if somehow Cleveland comes back and wins this. There's going to be a, like a really stiff penalty on you. Well, I'm not concerned about that. Uh, I do <laughs> believe that they can win game three. Uh, you have the best player in the world, so you have a chance. Uh, but he does need some help. Um, you know, Shumpert, J.R. Smith, Darren Williams go one for 13. I believe Steph Curry's out rebounded Tristan Thompson to this point. Ouch. That's that's typically not good. So um, he needs a little bit of help. And I, I thought he was a little bit fatigued last night. I mean, he started the game driving to the rim, and his first eight field goals were all in the restricted area. And then he just kind of starts settling for jump shots, I think, when he gets fatigued. And, uh, you know, and the big difference is instead of playing free safety and guarding Harrison Barnes and daring him to shoot, he's mm-hmm. guarding – a guy that's a pretty good scorer. Well, it's all about matchups, as you know, when you get to the finals. And, you know, unlike last year, you know, you could match up with everybody last year and even have some advantages. With with Durant, he's just the unicorn in there that you just – there. you know, who guards him if LeBron doesn't guard him? Yeah, they really don't have many options. They put Shumpert on him. And I thought the Warriors missed Kevin a lot in the, in the low post area uh, that he had him posted up. But, yeah, there's really nobody. I mean, or you could try Richard Jefferson or Shumpert. Um, but the guy's seven feet tall. He's going to shoot over whoever it is. He can post. He's. I mean, how about the defense? Five blocks. Um, it's just it, the Warriors are just – they're so skilled at every position. And uh, it, it's just – they get 132 points and they turn it over 20 times. I know. <laughs> Cleveland turned it over 20 times in game one and scored 91. So 40 more points – with the same amount of turnovers, they're that good offensively. What do you think LeBron is thinking right now? You know, uh, wow. Uh, we need more. They have four stars. We have two. But the moment. I, 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 I don't know. What, what, I was just shocked at the way they came out in game one and defended, or as, as what. John McKay would say he'd be in favor of some defense of execution because <laughs> they didn't do any of it. Um, what's the plan? You know, it's one-on-one basketball. That's just, that's just the way they play. And the Golden State Warriors are better than they were last year, and they're taking Cleveland out everything they want to do. Explain why they're such a good defensive team. I think people focus on the offense, and I say the defense really sets up a lot of what they do offensively. But you having played and now you're you know, analyzing this for the mothership, what is it? Why is that defense so good? The length and athleticism of every single guy that's on the floor, basically. Uh, I mean, I guess you could say Steph doesn't have the length, but he's a great athlete. He's a steals guy. I mean, he's not the greatest defender in the world, but, uh, you know, smarts, togetherness, all tied into what, what they need to do. Knowing a guy's going to rotate behind you if you make a mistake on, you know, sticking to the game plan. Uh, they they make very few mistakes, and I thought the, the tone of the series, if you go back to game one, Clay Thompson got switched out to Kevin Love, mm-hmm. and he made a defensive play that was, by the way, his defense is off the charts. Kyrie Irving had no chance last night. But he made a play on Kevin Love the first game, first play of the game for Clay, against Cleveland, and I just thought it set the tone, and people just want to talk about the offense, as they should, because it's fun to watch, and they score points, and they shoot the ball, and but their defense is uh, as good as, if not the best, in the league. We're talking to John Barry, the mothership, uh, working for ESPN Radio pregame, halftime, and postgame. If I'm, if I'm th- LeBron right now, I wonder if, if I would be thinking about next year. Like, okay, I'm down 2-0. I'm going back home. But is there a thought process that says Durant's going to be there for a little while? I mean, this nucleus is going to be there for a while. And if I want greatness and I want to be mentioned with Jordan – I'm not going to win titles the way we're playing or what we have here. Do, do you see that element of, hey, I got to go out and get some help in the offseason? Yeah, I, I, I would hope that he's not thinking about that right now. And, and I certainly doubt that he is. Um, they were down 2 0 again, just like I said from last year. So there's got to be some sort of belief that they go home and do this. No one gave him a chance down 3 1. 
Uh, and quite frankly, we all know they would have lost if Draymond Green was playing game five. But nonetheless, I mean, you have to go out, you go home and believe you're going to play better at home. Hopefully, you know, Shumpert and JR and these guys can, you know, make some shots, alleviate a little of the pressure off LeBron. But absolutely, regardless of what happens, this bench has to get a lot younger. Uh, they, need, they need another playmaker on this team. It's too much to ask of LeBron on a nightly basis. I, I think he's worn down. I really do. I, I, I've seen it in a couple games. I saw it in game three against Boston. Uh, there's nights that he just physically, I, I think he does bleed red. I think people don't want to believe that, but he's human. Is this a great, one of the great teams of all time we're seeing with Golden State? <sighs> I don't know. I'm an old guy now. It's hard for me to say that. Yeah, but you've been around I the mean, game. You saw the Jordan Bulls. You know, you were yeah. you, you were there. Uh, I don't know how you quantify what's the greatest of all time. You know, they do a point differential, all these analytics here. This team didn't right. win as many games as the previous year. So if they're breezing through Cleveland, is that going to factor in on just how great this team, how they're recognized? Well, isn't that an indictment of the Eastern Conference that – Cleveland can roll through losing one game. And if they get rolled in four by this team, uh, I give them credit. I, it's, just, it's just a different game. We, you know, just, yeah, you have to say that because this is the way the game is played. It's a completely different game than we saw in the seventies, eighties and all that. So yeah, it, 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 they are, they are that great at, at what's going on now. But like when I think about the, the Lakers and the Celtics in the eighties, like, Man, man for man, can you say that these guys are better than those guys? No. I don't I don't think you can, but it's a different game. And I don't think that those guys can do the things that these guys are capable of doing now. Uh it's the athleticism, the shooting, the skill the skill of every single guy that's out there on the floor at all times. Uh those teams didn't have it. Certainly most of the guys did, but Seems like everybody for the Warriors has it. Ian Clark was going off last night. I mean, all all these guys, they just they they they're so tied together. And you know what? Steve Kerr deserves so much of the credit. Just, uh, it's great to see him back too. By the way, yeah. he's one of the best guys you you meet in the NBA. I'm so happy that he's able to sit on the bench. When Kevin Durant's name comes up as great players, it usually goes to well, he's one of the great scorers in the game. Is Kevin Durant a great player? Absolutely. Uh, not a lot of credit for his defense. Uh, five blocks last night. Uh, I thought all year he played great defense. Um, he's absolutely a great player. I think a lot of bad habits from his first few years. Um, the way they played in Oklahoma City was very isolated isolation basketball. It was kind of your turn, my turn. Russell would go one-on-one, and KD would go one-on-one and stand around and He's learned how to play basketball the proper way. And now that he's doing that, he's even a greater player. Jeff Van Gundy said that uh, Curry and Durant, the best duo of all time. Ooh, stop, Jeff. (laughs) I mean, really? So Rihanna's the greatest of all time, too? I mean, come on, Jeff. Okay. So where do you start there? With uh, Curry and Durant, if they're not the greatest duo of all time, who do you got? Well, I mean, don't you have to go Pippen and Jordan? I don't know. Do you? With the titles, you could go Magic Kareem. You could go Russell and anybody else since he won a zillion times. No, I wouldn't go there. But, uh, yeah, I I, I mean, I I think about, you know, Stockton and Malone, but no titles. So that's not good enough nowadays, right? Yeah. Um, Well, Durant doesn't even have a title yet. Correct. So yeah. how can you even put him in the conversation with Magic and Kareem? I don't know. I don't know. It's Van Gundy. He was your coach. <laughs> I know. He's the best. I'm just, <laughs> I'm just he's, he's, <laughs> yeah, but uh, I, I don't know that I can go there. Like you said, without a title for KD, let's stop. And even if it's one, we, I don't think we can go there. How's morale at the I'll airport, take Magic by the way? And Kareem. How's morale at the airport? Fantastic. Yeah. Beautiful sky room here. It's nice. A little oatmeal, and I'm ready to head out to Cleveland. All right. Safe travels. Always great to talk to you. Thanks, Dave. All right. Bye. 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 John Barry, Mothership, working ESPN Radio. Come on, Steve. He just say, thanks, Dave. <laughs> well, 
That might have been a running joke that we had. Dave? It's early, too. John's been up. Well, I think I probably called him by the wrong name on purpose when we worked together. You called him R- Rick and Brent. Or, or Jimmy or something, I remember. Maybe that's what happened. Thanks, Dave. Yeah. The Dan Patrick Show, weekday mornings on Audience. <laughs> 